a party quite yet and the Tanadai's team don't expect a helping hand from Tayside rivals St Johnston tomorrow. The pressure's on for Alex Smith and his coaching team of John Blackley, Paul Hegarty and Morris Malpass. But the backroom boys relaxed for a while when they joined me for lunch. When I played I was always quite calm and relaxed about games. I enjoyed the games even if we, if we did get beat. And off the line by Morris Malpass. Yeah, this season particularly in the last month or so, it's been very difficult to watch. Frustration sort of crept in a wee bit. Uh, and I found it difficult. I found it emotionally a roller coaster. You know, you're on a high one minute, a low the next minute, and after games, I've actually been shattered. I think the three us here at the table, we're, we're all very passionate about football because you've been in the game for a good number of years, Rob. I don't think that ever uh, leads you. Anderson with it, the Shigarty's up there, there must be no! I think the important thing is that if we can try and stay up this year, then hopefully next year we can build on it. But we've got obviously two vital games to, to go, uh, one against uh, St Johnston and then Aberdeen. The character I've showed after the St Mirren result has been tremendous. <laughs> Nerves do play a big part in this part of the season, so full credit to them and hopefully they can continue it and get another two results. And I think that's what they should be looking for. Is Alex Smith the right man to have at the helm in this sort of situation? I think he's done an exceptional job. He's steadied the helm. <laughs> he's brought the right players at the right time, allied with uh, a lot of good team spirit. And Derek Lowe has been exceptional up front. Although he hasn't scored a lot of goals, his work rate has helped the team. Uh, we've always defended from the front. And Derek Lowe has came and brought that, that attitude to the team. Uh, everybody knows what Charlie's like when he's got the ball. You know, the fans get a little lift, so the players get a little lift when you hear the fans you know, buzzing when Charlie gets the ball. And I think Jim Walkins came up and uh, he's out to prove something. And I think so far he has. Who's head of shouting on the touchline these days? I think the last two games, I think uh, Morris is uh, way ahead of me at the present, but <laughs> it's uh, nip and tuck at uh, the uh, present time. He must be doing well to outscream you, surely. Well, I've as everyone knows from my days at Aberdeen, it was like Don Corleone, so <laughs> I've uh, learned from that past experience in regards to the, the shouting stakes, Rob. Has this been a difficult season for you in terms of you've been there right through the, the, the changeover of management, etc. Has it been pretty difficult? Uh, very difficult, uh, because I worked with Paul Stark um, for, I think, coming on seven years and all of a sudden he decides that he's had enough and it was a, a very difficult time for me uh, after it. No one needs to tell Paul Sturrock it's been a bad run, a depressing run for Dundee United. And really, in, in many terms, it was probably Morris and Paul Hergate and Tommy McLean that uh, got me through that hard period. When you look at the results since the turn of the year, um, United shouldn't be where they are, but I suppose that's something that you can't, at this stage, be thinking about it's just it's just really making yourself mathematically safe. Yes, I, I don't think league tables ever lie. You know, if you're top of the league, I like a Celtic. They they deserve to win the league because they've been the best team uh, this season. And like ourselves, obviously with St Mirren and ourselves, we've been fairly poor. Name is games to keep Dundee United up. And as you say, it, somebody's got to go. Jamie Buchan. Good effort from Jamie Buchan. Unfortunately, it's also St Mirren that's going to have to go. And we know that if we do our job, St Mirren will.